Greetings, beloved. I am Antoinette Bolden. Thank you for tuning in to God's Truth and Deliverance broadcast with Brother Hawk Bolden and I. We pray that during this message, the Holy Spirit will open up God's truth to you and you will receive deliverance in every area of your life. For the word declares in John 8 and 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So stay tuned and be blessed by today's message. We want to say good evening to everyone and God bless you. And uh, we thank you all for tuning in, those that are watching us online, of those that are listening to us over the phone, and of course those that are here present. Uh, we pray that uh, you all have been blessed so far by the testimony and by the prayer. And uh, we look forward to sharing the word of God with you and the things that God has to say to us tonight. Amen. We've been studying on the book of Ezra and the principles that the Lord want us to uh, look into um, in, this, in this book. And last, uh, uh, actually Sunday, we started talking about laying the foundation and how God had called Ezra basically to, to oversee this temple being built. And of course, uh, they established the worship there and, and had established the, uh, you know, the sacrifices being made. But the Bible says in the third chapter of the book of, Ez of Ezra that no foundation had been laid yet. And so eventually they finally laid that foundation. And when they laid the foundation, the Bible said that the ancient men, in other words, those men who had saw the first temple, that they wept because here it was, this other foundation had been laid. And now they get to see, you know, they basically saw a revival, basically, that they knew were going to take place that God had laid a foundation in that generation. And as we explained uh, in the last uh, message, that God wants a foundation laid in every generation, you see. Uh, we have to say this, you know, uh, again, uh, that people, some people have a problem with modern day apostles and prophets, of course, you know, that, that the, Enemy will attack what God has established. We expect that, you see. Uh, but I can promise you that they're still around. And because they say, well, you know, the Bible says that no other foundation can be laid than that which has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. And so it's not that God have just completely cut out those two offices of the apostles and prophets, you see. What it is, what, what was Paul saying? That... No other foundation except Jesus Christ can be laid. Everybody understand? In other words, the same material has to be laid. It doesn't mean, well, Paul have already wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, Peter and James and John, those apostles there. They've already wrote some of the new, you know, most of the New Testament. And so we don't need any more apostles and prophets. You know, everything has already been written that need to be written. The only problem is... All of those men are deceased. And so, you know, so if, if you use that as an argument, then you have to say, well, there's no more need for preachers. We have the Bible here. We can just all read it and get saved from reading. Everybody understand? And so, no, God's still sending preachers to preach his word. So, yes, God is still sending apostles and prophets to do his work. Everybody understand? And so, yes, they're still here now. You may ask, why is it that the enemy is attacking these two offices? Now, that's the first thing that you have to know is that the enemy is the one that's attacking these two offices. And, we, and we, after tonight, we pray that you'll have a better understanding, you see, of why these two offices are attacked so much and, and, and as stern as they're being attacked, you see. Nobody has a problem with pastors. And pastor, they just gather the sheep and teach them and kind of pet them and things like that. Nobody has a problem with evangelists. They go out and they preach the love of God and get the world to come in, you see. Nobody has a problem with teachers. But those two offices, apostles and prophets, we got a problem with those. Why? Because an apostle, he can build a church from the ground up and he establishes it in truth. Prophets, they come in and correct what has been, you know, and call people out of sin. And so if you have churches where folks like living in sin and you have churches that don't care about 
truth being established, then let's do away with those two offices. All we need is a pastor to pet us. Everybody understand? And so these two offices, they are attacked very heavily in, in today's church, you know. People say, don't mind saying, well, Pastor Jim or Pastor Bolden, you know, is the pastor of this church. But God forbid, let's say apostle this or apostle that or prophet this or prophet that. You know, now you're just getting big headed. <laughs> and so let's just think about that. Why is that in, in today's church that we accept pastors, we accept evangelists and we accept teachers? But some kind of way, God don't need those other two. You see, it's, it's something wrong there. And we're going to show you in this Bible why people have a problem with those two offices. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Again, we're continuing on in this series on the principles of Ezra. And we're still laying down today uh, what we started with last Sunday concerning um, the foundation the foundation and, and why it's important and, 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 and to have a foundation. Now, let me say this uh, since we're going there. We're going to the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. That, you know, your foundation, you can consider it just like your feet. Uh, people don't, people walk on their feet. And they stand on their feet. Your feet is what gives you balance. And I go this far. Uh, if your pinky, pinky toe, just that small little old toe that seems very insignificant, if it gets cut off some kind of way, you'll find out just how much you needed it to balance yourself. You see, now many people don't understand that uh, until it's gone. And then they, you know, it's like having to learn how to walk all over again. You have to use four toes instead of that, that one little pinky one that was crying wee, wee, wee all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> you see and so it, it, it just seems insignificant but it, you need it to help balance you every part of your body God gave you for a purpose everybody understand every part of you is there for a reason and you don't find out how much you needed it until it's gone you know you, you really don't and so that's the way it is in, in the in, in, in the body of Christ, all of these offices are needed. In, in fact, let's go ahead and start reading there. The fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. And uh, <clears throat> we'll start reading at verse 11. It says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. For what? The perfecting of the saints. Now, I think it's odd that most people who have a problem with those two offices, apostles and prophets, they're the same people that will tell you nobody's perfect or that nobody can be perfect. You see how when you dismiss those, those two there, uh, perfection goes right out the door and, and grace comes in and just covers all your sins some kind of way. Uh, grace will just let you sin and just keep sinning until you wake up in hell and find out Grace don't cover your will for sin. Judgment Amen. does. Amen. You see? And so the Bible says that he gave these offices for what? The perfecting of the saints. Now, when you take those two top ones out, and we call them top because according to the Bible, those are the two top offices. And let, well, let me show you that in the Bible. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Just hold your spot there. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Um, the 12th chapter. Twelfth chapter of 1 Corinthians. And we'll start reading at verse 27. It says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God had set some in the church. First who? Second who? Everybody see that? Everywhere you see in this Bible, those offices mentioned, the first two, every single time, that first one that's going to be mentioned is apostles, and then the second one that's going to be mentioned is a prophet. Every single time. 
And, and you may say, well, they, they are all the same. That's just, they just all preach. Except they're not. They're not the same. Everybody see. My wife and I, we're one. Yeah, everybody understand. In other words, we have the same mission, uh, but, but we're two different kinds of people. Two different people. Her role in the marriage is not the same as mine. And my role is not the same as hers. Now, you know, we just have to bring this out. When you have a church that haven't been established by God's order and what God has set up, you're going to have an imbalanced church. That's the reason why folks are so imbalanced in churches today. Because they've totally wiped out these two offices here. And so they don't have anything to stand on. You know, we just have to point this out. You know, my wife and I, would, as I pointed out earlier, were two different people. Uh, husband and wife are two different kinds of species all together. Just two, you know, the problem that a lot of people have in marriage is they, the husband wants the wife to be like him and the wife wants the husband to be like her. And it's not that way, you know. Uh, when God pulled Eve out of Adam, that made them two individuals. And so there's no way that they could be alike. Everybody see that? Them coming together make them one person. And so what have happened in church today is the same thing that have happened in society today. Two men coming together or two women being together, you're going to have a bunch of foolishness going on. It, it, you know, and, and then now you got them trying to adopt children. You know they're going to grow up messed up. Imbalanced, in other words. That husband is there to balance his wife. That wife is there to balance her husband. And so that they'll meet up in the middle somewhere. So he's not completely crazy and she's not really, you know, on, in left field with being emotional. <laughs> Everybody see but no, in this society, we all have to get along. We all have to love. We all have to be exactly the same, except that's not the way it's meant to be. And so in church, that's the way it is. A preacher get up and preach the truth, and all of a sudden, he's hateful. You hateful. I just don't feel what you're saying. <laughs> you're mean because you're preaching about hell. When Jesus talked more about hell than he did heaven. Oh, folks don't have a problem with believing in heaven. They don't have a problem with believing in a loving God, you know, but they got a problem with Jehovah that will send them there. You see, they, they got a problem with, with, with God when he brings wrath. What is it? Just like children, you know, children, they don't have a problem with mom and daddy as long as mom and daddy giving them everything they want. But as soon as the belt come into play, mom and daddy mean, you know. And so that's what it is today in, in the church in the church uh, world today, uh, folks are off balance with pastors petting them on the back. Everybody see? It's one-sided. Let me make this clear for everybody. What we have adopted today is not of God. There's no way in the Bible to say there has to be a pastor over every church. The church at Antioch, the only two offices they had there, were prophets and teachers. Everybody see? Jeremiah, I think it's in the 16th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, he says, I have not ceased from being a prophet and a pastor. Everybody see? He, he was a shepherd as well. And so, but today, if you're over a church, they just automatically assume that you're a pastor. And the Bible don't teach that. It, it doesn't teach that at all. You see? And so now we got this, the, the whole church is off balance because everybody be, is being patted on the back. Nobody's being corrected. Nobody's being established in the truth. So the devil attacks this idea of the foundation because he understands if you just go along with anything, I can get you at any time that I want. If you don't know what you truly believe, what is your foundation? Your foundation is exactly what you believe. That's what your foundation is. It's what you believe about Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ is the foundation that any minister that God have called to do it is supposed to lay. But the problem is, is just like what Paul pointed out in Galatians, that many preachers have come preaching another gospel. 
In other words, he's giving you something else to stand on besides that rock. Oh, it, it's not important what we believe. As long as we just love one another, we'll make it to heaven. And that's a lie. You need to know what you believe and why you believe it. And those two offices, the apostles and prophets, they're the ones that will let you know this is what the word says. This is what you're supposed to believe. Everybody understand? You know, and, and folks don't want to get, they don't want to talk about these types of things because that's going to make me question everything that I've ever learned. Let me make this clear. There are some things that it's so important in, in what you believe. And, and I sincerely know that, you know, that, that because here's the thing. The Bible says faith without works is dead. I'm going to tell you why. Because really, in actuality, there's no such thing as faith without works. Why? Because your, 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 your faith produces works. What does that mean? Whatever you believe, that's what you're going to line up with. That, that's what you're going to do, what you believe. You're going to do what you believe. Jesus said a tree is known by the fruit that it, is bear, that it bears. So a tree can talk all day saying, I'm a banana tree. But if it's producing oranges, everybody understands. So what, what is it? The banana tree believes. I'm, I'm a banana tree. No matter what it's talking, that's what, that's what the Isaiah meant when he says that, that you're hypocrites because your mouth talks God, but your heart is far from me. In other words, you're talking about the Lord. All, you can talk about him all day long, uh, but are you acting like him? Are you following him and, and what he taught? Are you a real disciple? Jesus said, uh, you are my disciples indeed if you continue in my word. Don't, don't tell me how much uh, 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 of God you got in you and you acting like the devil. Jesus said, told, the, the, told these, these, these uh, false brethren that eventually left him, you are of your father the devil and his works will you do. Everybody see. And so that's one of the reasons why uh, the devil attacks the foundation so hard uh, because he, he understands that if your foundation isn't anything, you don't have anything to stand on. And eventually it'll just collapse to begin with. If you don't, you know, you better know what you're believing. The Lord showed me some years ago. Now, I'm the type and I've always been that way. I don't claim to know the whole Bible, but I preach what God gave me to preach. And when he gave it to me to say, I'll die believing it, you see. And so years ago, I baptized my two youngest daughters, baptized them in the Baptist church. And, but I baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because that's what the Lord told me to do. But you have people today who say, well, it don't matter how you've been baptized. Baptized, you know, in the Lord Jesus Christ in that name. Or Father, Son, Holy Ghost is all the same, except it's not the same. Everybody see. And so I baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and you know, when, when I did that, you know, how, how the church just gathers around when folks are being baptized. They didn't. Because they knew what I was going to do. <laughs> and so, you know, I went to the Lord about it like, Lord, you know, I just had to be honest. My feelings were hurt. Now, these folks, they'll, they'll gather all around when folks are baptizing in these titles. But, you know, baptizing in your name is an issue there. And so the Lord let me know, you did exactly what I told you to do, and that's how you're going to do it. And so what the Lord showed me was, as I was baptizing my daughters, that they were in the shower. And water was falling on them. But when I said the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that water turned into blood. And now they begin to get clean. Why? Because in the book of, in the second chapter of, of Acts, it talks about being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so that your sins will be remitted. In other words, you baptize in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, your sin's still on you. Because Father, Son, Holy Ghost didn't die for you. Everybody see? Jesus Christ was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Bible says that he is the express image of the invisible God. Express image means that's God. That's him. That's the, he's what you see. 
Everybody see that. And so, no, don't, don't fall for that lie, first of all, that it doesn't matter what you believe. It does matter. Jesus Christ came to his disciples and asked them, who do men say that I am? They answer, well, some say you're John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, some say that prophet. And he wanted to know, well, who do you say that I am? Why did he say that if it doesn't matter? Why? Because as long as they just consider Jesus Christ a prophet, that, you know, we don't have to believe in his death. He's just a prophet that died like the rest of them. Everybody see? You see how important? Yeah, you can believe in Jesus Christ, but here's the question. What is Jesus Christ to you? That's your foundation. Amen. The Bible says that the devil believe that it's one God. Yeah, it's a whole lot of folks. Muslims believe that he walked this earth. They don't believe he's the Messiah. A lot of Jews still walking around waiting on the Messiah to come the first time. Why? Because they missed him and killed him when he showed up. You see how important it is? It's important what you believe. They didn't believe that he was the Messiah. That's why they killed him. And, and if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and that he came to save you from your sins, you do the same thing they did. Try to hang him on that cross. Every time you sin, that's what you're doing. You're crucifying the Son of God afresh. That's why you folks that think that you can live in sin and still name the name of Jesus Christ. You're deceived. You see that? And so it is important brothers and sisters, what we believe. And, and, and God wants us to be specific in, in what we believe. God is a, is a detailed God. Now, if you don't know anything else, you better know that about him. It ain't just all wishy-washy, like, well, you know, God don't care where I live. He don't care who I Yes, he does. He care about all of that. He is a detailed God. And you have to line up with that word, you know, if you're going to get anywhere. And you have to know what you believe. And so that nobody can kick it from underneath you. When Jesus Christ revealed to me that he was God and that was it, when you get to heaven, it's not going to be three of them. It's going to be one. That we are to baptize in his name. You see, when he revealed that, n n nobody else can come along and talk me out of that. You see? So it's important what you believe because your, your, your actions will always follow what you believe. Now, when it, going back to the fourth chapter book of the book of Ephesians, you see, and uh, verse 12 again, it says, For he, he gave these offices for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So it takes all five of these offices for people to be established. They all have their different functions. Everybody see that? Verse 13, till we all come in what? Unity. Now, if we don't have apostles and prophets, ain't no, no going to be any unity. Now, for somebody to say that apostles and prophets are done away with, are we all in any unity yet? No. And so, it, <laughs> and so if we're all not in the unity, they're still around. Everybody see that? Until we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of who? You see? Yeah, you can know that he existed and still not know him. Everybody see? Unto a perfect man. Everybody see that? Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of who? That means that you can be like him. And I've heard folks say that. That's a lie. Well, that was only, you know, Jesus Christ was the only perfect one that lived. That's a lie. This Bible says that these, these ministers have been sent until we become a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of Jesus Christ. In other words, God is going to keep sending apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists until people grow up and look exactly the way the Lord Jesus Christ looked when he walked this earth. That's the reason why he came in the flesh. Now, let's think about this. Why would he come in the flesh, condemn sin in the flesh, if you couldn't be like him? He would have just came in his natural, in his regular form. The purpose of him coming in flesh was to show you how you could live. Everybody understand? Jesus Christ didn't come here doing miracles. 
The Bible says he grew in wisdom. Everybody see that? That Holy Spirit had to descend on him as well. Everybody understand? Why? Because he wanted to show us that we could condemn sin in the flesh as well. That we could live without sin. Now, it, see, if you don't have that in your heart, you don't have the foundation of Jesus Christ. You might have a Christ, but it's not Jesus Christ. You have another gospel there when you, you, when you make excuses for sin. And, and when you think that you can continue to live in sin and just continue to do things against God and God will excuse it. You see, you don't have that foundation. All right, let's go and keep reading. Verse 14 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Everybody see that? And carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So what is he saying? When, when these offices come, they come to establish you in truth so, so that you're not swayed back and forth. So that you're not moved on, you know, on what you believe, that, that you're steadfast in what you believe. I'm going to tell you how important it is. The devil tried to trip Jesus up in what he believed. In the book of Matthew, I think it's around the third chapter, uh, Jesus Christ was baptized, and when the Holy Spirit descended on him, that spirit spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Why did Jesus say that? Why, why did God say that? Because he wanted the Lord to understand who exactly he was. Now, let's keep in mind, he was flesh. And he could have sinned just like the first Adam sinned. But he chose not to. And so then in the fourth chapter of Matthew, what does the devil come and say? If you be the son of God. In other words, I'm going to see if you really believe it, what you just heard. You see, how the, the, in other words, God had prepared him for the temptation that was going to come. If you be the son of God, turn his stone into bread. Now, if he didn't believe you. We thank you again for tuning in to God's Truth and Deliverance broadcast. Prayerfully, this message has better equipped you for your spiritual journey. To request your free copy of this message in its entirety, or if you would like to submit a prayer request, you may write to God's Truth and Deliverance, Post Office Box 23504, Nashville, Tennessee 37202. Or you may submit your request by calling and leaving a message at 615-530-6120. Tune in next week, same station, same time, for more of God's truth and deliverance. Be blessed.